This program is produced in the video studios of the Rock of Ages Ministries Incorporated in Cleveland, Tennessee. The purpose of this program is to magnify the Lord Jesus Christ and to share his glorious gospel with you. In a moment, the founder and director of Rock of Ages Ministries, Dr. Ed Ballou.
Cleveland, Tennessee. Route 8, box 482, there it is on your screen. Cleveland, Tennessee, 37311. We'll send it to you right away. And I know you'll enjoy it. And uh, we'll just be happy to do that. Well, we've got a, uh, our young sister Angie Kaler going to sing for us. Angie's been such a blessing and such a help to us. Angie, sing that song, What Would I Do Without Jesus? Would you sing for us right now, please? <laughs>
I want you to listen, please, as I read. But grow, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Father, take the message, though brief as it is, and use it for your glory in Christ's name. Amen. Note, if you will, the way that this scripture is written. It said, but grow. But grow. Get it now. But grow. Are you listening? But grow grow. Oh, I want you to get that. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you get the emphasis right up front? It said, but grow. In our churches and in society today, we have men and women who have been saved by the marvelous grace of God. They've been washed in the blood, but I'm sorry to report to you that there is evidently no growth or very little growth in their lives. They've never come to a place of spiritual maturity. The sad reflection on this thought is there's men and women that have been saved 20 and 30 and yes, oh, many more years that are still in the, the playpen, so to speak, that have never reached any place of spiritual growth. But here the Bible said, but grow. God wants his people to grow in the Lord. I'm, I'm sure that someone may be viewing this tape right now. You've been saved a long time. And so long ago, you should have already been teaching Sunday school. You already should have been working in the field of our blessed Lord. But your favorite song is, I shall not be moved. You find no reason to grow. Did you know, my friend, you'll never grow without reading the blessed word of God. Some of you have so neglected the Bible, the only thing that is worn out about your Bible is the covers where you place it under your arm every Sunday morning and go to the house of God. Now that may be impressive for someone that's looking for somebody religious, but there's many religious people that have never known any spiritual growth. But grow! Oh, so many right now are still just little boys and little girls. They're still just kids. Paul said on one occasion, when I was a child, I spake as a child. But now Paul said, I've grown up. I have grown up. I'm no more a little boy. I'm no more a kid. I have laid aside my toys. I've put away my little playthings. And now, thank God, he said, I'm a mature man. Oh, how many of you right now need to take time to look at your life and say, have I grown? Have I grown? Have I known any spiritual growth whatsoever? Sam, sad to say, many of you would find there's absolutely no growth in your life. Notice what the Bible said. It said as babes desiring the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. You remember what I told you just a few minutes ago? You will never grow apart from this Bible. The Bible said to study, to show thyself approved, a workman unto God that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word. Oh, so many folks have never learned the importance of that blessed fact. Many of them, I hear them a lot of times when they get down to pray. They'll say, Lord, thank you for this beautiful Sabbath day. Of course, they're referring to Sunday. Well, may I just say I'm not minoring, uh, I'm not majoring on a minor. I know that that's not the greatest thing. But do you know those dear hearts have never discovered that Sunday is not the Sabbath? Now, it is the old Jewish Sabbath, but not to you and I who have been set free by the grace of God. We rejoice in the Lord's day. 
Thank God for that fact. You know you've got to rightly divide the Word of God. You're not under law. You're under grace if you've been saved. You ought to know that fact. You ought to be rejoicing in that fact. You ought to say thank God for that fact that I'm not under the law anymore. For what the law could not do in that it was weak, God sent His Son. Thank God for that Son. The law came by Moses, but grace and truth by the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God today for that. Have you grown enough to know anything about that? The Bible said, but grow. You know your faith should have grown. The Bible said, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Is your faith any stronger today? Some of you try to stand up on your legs of faith, and like a small baby when it's learning to walk, stumbles and staggers and falls down. I believe you ought to have some legs that have got faith in them. I believe you ought to stand up and say, I believe God. Daniel said, there's a God in heaven. I believe that you ought to get out on your knees and not whimper and whine. God said, ask and you shall receive. The Bible said in Jeremiah 33, 3, call unto me and I will answer thee. And some of you go to the throne room of grace with your fingers crossed with a four-leaf clover in your pocket. You go there stumbling and staggering along on legs that ought to be legs of faith. Now, but now then, my dear friend, you haven't even grown enough to stand up. Did you ever see a little baby being fed by its mother? She'll take that baby food. And by the way, if you ever tasted that stuff, taste awful. And she'll put the spoon down in the little jar holding her baby in her arm. And she'll put the spoon down there, put it in his little mouth, and he'll spit it out. He don't like it. That's the way a lot of folks are in church. The preacher tries to feed them. The preacher tries to get them to grow. The preacher tries to give them the thing that they need and they know they need. But they said, I don't like it. I don't like, oh, I don't like that. I'm going to spit it out. Oh, my friend, you better watch when you start spitting the Word of God out on Sunday morning. Said, I won't have it. You better watch when you get all pouted up like some little child and said, I'm not going to go back. Do you know that's so childish? That means you haven't grown any. You know some of the distinguishing marks of a child is this. It pouts a lot. Oh, it'll pout. It'll pout. When Mama said to clean up your room, the little lips will drop down. The little old face just gets all distorted. It don't want to do that. But God said in His Word, study. You said, I don't want to study. I'd rather read the newspaper. I'd rather watch TV. Oh, I'd rather go do this, do that. And then you pout when God said, study to show thyself approved. I want you to grow up, God said. I want you to eat the things that will make you strong and straight and be a good warrior for the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, thank God for the privilege of studying the Word of God. Thank the Lord. He said, wherewith shall a young man cleanse his way? Here's how you cleanse your ways by taking heed to his word. Oh, thank God for the word. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. Thank God for that blessed fact. Oh, bless his name today that I can get in the blessed book and receive the spiritual vitamins that I need, that I can get what I need from that book to sustain me. I know the devil hits me. I know the devil jumps on my back. But thank God for the sword of the Spirit. Thank God for the book that I can quote the word of God to it and said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. The Bible said in the book of John, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. I'm telling you, my friend, you'll never grow like you ought to grow without getting this book. I don't mean study it like a Baptist book or a Methodist book or a Nazarene book. Study it for the blessed Word of God, which it is. Do you know this Bible doesn't say Catholic Bible, doesn't say Nazarene Bible, doesn't say Presbyterian Bible, doesn't say Methodist Bible. This is the everlasting, enduring Word of God that liveth and abideth forever. I thank Him for that. And you can get what you need out of it. You ought to grow in faith. Then your prayer life ought to grow. Oh, my dear friend, some of you right now wonder what's wrong with you. You said, well, I don't know why I don't have power. You don't ever talk to God. You don't ever steal away and pray. You don't ever find that place of communication where you can get out on your knees 
and talk to the Heavenly Father. You ought to grow in your prayer life. Your prayer life ought to quit being that now. Lay me down to sleep. I pray thee, Lord, my soul to keep. Now, there's nothing wrong with a mother bowing to the side of a little old boy and girl at night and repeating that little simple prayer and getting them knowing that there's a Heavenly Father you're talking to. But I believe you ought to lay down your tinker toys after a while. I believe you ought to lay them down and get a hold of the horns of the altar and communicate with heaven. Oh, Jacob said, I'll not let you go till you bless me. I'll not let you. I'll not turn you loose till you bless me. Oh, thank God that angel could have got away from Jacob. That angel could have jumped. Why, well, just a tuck his finger and flipped Jacob's head off. But he never done it. But I'll tell you right now, he placed his hand in the hollow of old Jacob's thigh. He, he limped the rest of his days. Oh, he never could walk without a limp. But I'll tell you one thing. He had a blessing. He knew that God had touched him. He knew he'd been close to heaven. He knew that somebody had been around him. Every time he limped, he said hallelujah. Every time he staggered a little bit on that old leg that that angel touched, he remembered there that night that he wrestled with the Lord. Some of you right now don't know what it is to pray all night. Some of you don't know what it is to pray an hour. Some of you don't know what it is to wrestle with God. But you ought to grow in grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. You ought to get a hold of heaven every once in a while. Oh, my friend. So many folks say, well, preacher Blue, you Baptists don't believe in healing. Oh, may the, may the fleas off a thousand camels get under your armpits. I want to tell you something right now. You're looking at an old Baptist preacher that knows one thing. If there's any healing, God will do it. It ain't some healer. It's not sending away after some blessed will or limb or some holy rock. And the Bible said in the book of James that the, faith, that the prayers of faith shall save the sick. It's somebody that touched heaven. It's somebody that got a hold of God. It's somebody that touched the hem of his garment. It's somebody that reared back on, on all fours and said, thank God my heavenly Father is able to answer prayer and believe God and wouldn't turn loose so your faith ought to grow and your prayer life ought to grow and your witnessing ought to grow. Oh, listen to me. Uh, you remember that person you went up to, handed that track to, just trembling like a leaf, scared to death, didn't know what to do. Oh, you were scared. Wasn't you? You, I remember. You say, why are you laughing? But I, I listen. I remember as well as it was yesterday. I thought I was going to have 14 heart attacks sideways. I never was so scared in my life. Went up to that person out in the little track. I wanted to hand it to him. I wanted to say something. I really did. <laughs> I really did. I wanted to say something so bad, but I just handed it to him. I nearly run trying to get away from him. Oh, scared to death. But I want to tell you now, that was a little old boy. That was just a kid. First track, first witness. Oh, I couldn't say much. I know Jesus loved him. And I knew Jesus loved me. I knew, I knew that he understood my old flesh. I knew that he knew I was scared. But I want to tell you right now, and look you in your God-given eyeball. Hallelujah. I want to hand you a track through this television camera and tell you, thank God, Jesus saves from the uttermost to the guttermost. I want to tell you, looking right at you, that he reaches down still today and picks you up out of the mire clay. I want to tell you right now, wherever you may be, lost and going to hell, that the Son of God died on the cross of Calvary. Didn't have to do it. He could have called 10,000 angels, but he didn't do it. He died willingly. He became your substitute that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Oh, thank God for the cross. Thank God for that. You ought to grow in that. Some of you have never ever grown one bit. You haven't handed out a gospel tract. Well, you said, I don't want to push religion on nobody. I'm not a religion peddler. Never have been, never will be, don't want to be, don't like people that are. Thank God that I'll tell you one thing. I want to tell you instantly, looking you right at you, that I believe today that every child of God ought to grow in the ability to hand out tracts and witness and be a personal soul winner. I believe that ought to be a steady growth in your life. And if you're not doing it, you need to grow. I mean grow. I mean get some spiritual vitamins. Get down to it. All the Bible said, but grow. And you got the point. I said, are you listening to me? I said, are you listening to me? Oh, thank God for the privilege of run, walking into God's restaurant and say, give me some of that food that'll grow, that'll make me grow, that I can get out of here and be what I ought to be. So you ought to grow. Now listen, you know, I hear a lot of folks, you know, in this world, there's a sad prevailing fact that we've got to look at. There's a lot of little babies that are born with spina bifida and many other problems. They can't walk. 
one of our uh, missionaries, Brother Skipper, got a son. His name's Clay. Clay I was by, I born that way. Can't walk, can't walk, never will walk in this world. But you know, in the family, in the birth of God's children, there's no birth defects, not one. If you're sitting around, it's not because God uh, don't want you to grow. God wants you to grow. Are you listening to me? God, well, I said, are you listening to me? God wants you to grow. And the reason you're not growing, you, you, you just go to church and eat what you want to. You want to get the ice and you want to get the shouting and the singing. But you don't want to get the word. You don't want to hide the word in your heart that you might not sin against. Oh, you want to lick the cake pan, don't you? Oh, yes, I said you did. I said you really did. And that's what's the matter with you right now. That's exactly what's wrong with you. You want to eat the sweet things. Do you remember that bunch of people said prophesy unto smooth things? We don't like this. It's too rough for us. I'm going to tell you something. You need some gravel in your crawl every once in a while. You need something, bless your heart, that will make you grow up and be what you ought to be. Listen to me. Are you listening to me? I believe today it's time that you begin to eat some spiritual beans and turnip greens and cornbread and some things. Not just not just run down and get you a hamburger and some french fries and something that you can't saw me alone. I believe you ought to need something in your insides that'll make you grow and you can work on, that you can be what you ought to be and live for God in the sight of this frowning, uh, sin-cursed and sin-benighted world. I'm talking to you today, you ought to grow. If you're sitting there viewing this tape and you say, well, that old preacher's preaching to me, oh, you got it right there, hoss. I don't believe in preaching for people. I believe in preaching to people. I don't believe God, John the Baptist came out of the wilderness preaching for people. I believe he came out crying out against their dirty, low-down sins. I believe he came out of the wilderness with a handful of roasted grasshoppers and some old skins wrapped around him. I don't believe he had any even. I don't believe he had any aftershave lotion on anything wrong with that. But I believe, bless God, he smelled like a man, looked like a man. I believe he looked at him and said, that fellow's grown up in the woods back counter. He's come out and told us something. He's come out and got something to tell us. All oh, today, grow in grace. Grow in grace. Be no more children. Toss to and fro with every wind of doctrine. Well, my floor director said, I just got another minute. Wish I had a whole big bunch of them, but I just got one more minute to go. They're telling me. But I want to tell you today, as I leave the air with this videotape, why don't you look around and say, hey, that preacher's telling me the truth. I've been saved for years. Why, well, I've been born again for years, but I've not grown one bit. I'm still uh, playing with pinker toys. Why don't you today straighten up and say, hey, I'm going to learn to walk. By the grace of God, by the power of God, I'm going to learn how to walk. I'm, I'm going to start doing something for God. Why don't you take your track in your hand if you're saved and go down and witness to somebody. Get in this book every day, consistently. Oh, consistently. Stay in the book. And then get you a place to pray. Get you a place to pray. Are you listening to me? I'm saying to you, get your place. Get your place out in the woods or uh, maybe in the bedroom there. Shut the door. Tell the wife or the husband, honey, I'm going to talk to God. I'm going to pray. I'm going to do it every day. And then uh, you'll start growing. Well, I'll declare the time just slipped by so fast. Hope you enjoyed the tape today. I really do. Uh, would you bow your heads with us while we have just a moment of prayer? Our Father, take the tape. Use it for your glory. Oh, Father, put your hand on it. Help folks to grow. In Jesus' sweet name I pray and ask it. Amen. Amen.